Imran Khan, the man at the center of Pakistan's political chaos right now. From cricketing hero, to prime minister, to an ousted opposition leader fighting for survival. And they want me in jail so that I cannot contest elections. My 26 years of politics is the first time I feel that people realize that they want true freedom. 30 years ago, you were one of the greatest cricket players of all time. You were a national hero, a captain for this country. Did you know you were going to be prime minister of this country? No, it was never my ambition because I was focused completely on cricket. Three and a half years in as a prime minister was the most difficult thing I'd ever done because our country was bankrupt. It is time for fresh faces to come into Pakistani politics. Since bursting into politics in 1996 and being elected prime minister in 2018, the challenges facing Imran Khan have been enormous. What was it like for you knowing that someone is shooting at you? Well, I was, I was expecting uh, an attempt on my life and I had predicted that for two months. When I heard the gunshots, I thought they were firecrackers. All indications are that whenever the elections, my party is going to sweep the elections. If I don't fight for my country, who will? If the current government was worried about economic stability, why did they conspire to remove our government? We only had one and a half years left. So why, what was the hurry? The prime minister was about to be convicted. His sons were about to be convicted on billions of rupees of corruption. So the hurry was they didn't want to remove the government because there was a problem with the economy or they were worried about inflation. They wanted to remove the government because they wanted to get rid of the corruption cases, which they did. You see, unfortunately, in the West, all you look upon Afghanistan is Taliban and anti-Taliban. We in Pakistan look upon Afghanistan as our neighbor and after 40 years, for the first time, there's peace in Afghanistan. Now, what I said was, the Western countries must get them into the mainstream. Because the more you mainstream them, the more influence you would have in enforcing human rights. But if you isolate them, what leverage has any country got left now to tell them to send your girls to school or, or human rights? You can't. Isn't that, Isabel? Problem is, there's Imran Khan as a human rights activist. I used to speak about everything, not just Muslims. You know, wherever there was discrimination and uh, human rights abuse, I would speak up against it. When you become the prime minister, your number one priority becomes, in my case, 220 million people of Pakistan. When that is your number one priority, then you have to be very careful. You don't have yeah. the luxury to criticize. Poor countries do not have the luxury to criticize when they have a huge amount of uh, vulnerable people. Rich countries, unfortunately, they too are selective. That, you know, we as countries should stay neutral. We became part of the US war on terror. 80,000 Pakistanis were killed. Over $100 billion were lost to the economy. There were 400 drone attacks by the US on an ally in Pakistan. And what did we gain out of this? One lesson Pakistan has learned is stay out of other people's conflicts. Are you enjoying this fight? Yes. Because I think uh, if I woke up and there was no challenge in my life, I would think it's the end of my life.